all imperfect knowledge is bunk. Taken from Perfect Philosophy, The Radical Way of No Ideas by the Avataric Great Sage, Adidas Samraj. Humankind has always sought to control what otherwise appears or is presumed to control it. Thus, to achieve control of the apparent or presumed controller, an effort is always made to capture it. The method of capture or control of the controller is an activity in either exoteric or exterior, or esoteric, or interior sp space. The achievement of capture or control of the controller is to centrally locate or surround and contain what otherwise surrounds or contains and thus controls either the collective or the individual ego self or the operative, perceptual and conceptual point of view. <clears throat> what is apparently or presumed to be controlling the ego self or the point of view is able to thus control the ego self or the point of view because it is apparently or presumed to be either perceptually or conceptually outside and thus surrounding and containing the ego self or the point of view. Therefore, in order to control the apparent or presumed controller, an effort is made to place the apparent or presumed controller at the centre or with or even within the ego self or immediately at the point of view and thus and thereby to surround and contain the controller with the ego self or the point of view. The method applied in order to surround and contain or to centre and thereby control the controller is either of an outer and thus exoteric perceptual and conceptual nature or of an inner and thus esoteric perceptual and conceptual nature. The outer or exoteric method of controlling the controller is characteristically performed in the physical space associated with the bodily or body-based point of view. The inner or esoteric method of controlling the controller is characteristically presumed in the mental space associated with the interior of the otherwise bodily or body-based point of view. In the conventions of all the traditions of human method, whether exoteric or esoteric, Control of the apparent or otherwise presumed controller is always a mode of knowledge, either perceptual or conceptual, in its nature. Exoteric knowledge is always a mode of physically effective control over a controller that is apparently or presumed to be of a physical nature or kind. Esoteric knowledge is always a mode of mentally effective control over a controller that is apparently or presumed to be of a mental nature or kind. All conditional or psychophysical knowledge, whether exoteric or esoteric, is a method 
or otherwise a presumed state of control over what otherwise appears or is presumed to control the body and or the mind of the collective and or the individual ego self or operative point of view. What is or would be controlled by either exoteric or esoteric knowledge is always as the first and most basic procedure objectified and thus and thereby dissociated from the self or the point of view by the exercise of the presumption that the controller is not self. Every object of knowledge or every mode or form of presumed not-self is either an apparent or otherwise presumed object or mode of process within the conditionally arising apparent world and universe or otherwise it is the totality of conditionally arising apparent universe or world itself or as an objectified whole. The exoteric knowledge of any conditionally arising apparent or presumed object or otherwise the exoteric knowledge of the objectified totality of the world and universe is necessarily a mode or kind of physically based knowing and thus and thereby controlling it. The esoteric knowledge of any conditionally arising apparent or presumed object or otherwise the esoteric knowledge of the objectified totality of world and universe is necessarily a mode or kind of metaphysically based knowing and thus and thereby controlling it. All physically based knowledge is either commonplace and thus a matter of ordinary social convention or otherwise scientific and thus the result of the rigorous application of a discrete and discursive method of physical knowing of presumed to be physical objects. All metaphysically based knowledge is either as a matter of ordinary social convention commonplace religious or otherwise either mystical or magical or in the mode of metaphysical philosophy and thus in either case the result of the rigorous application of a discrete and discursive method of metaphysical knowing of presumed to be metaphysical objects. Exoteric science is the application of physically based ideas or body based presumptions to apparent or presumed to be physical objects. Exoteric science achieves physically effective control over physical objects and human populations by means of physically based technologies. Exoteric science achieves physically effective mind control over human individuals and collectives by means of physically effective technologies, practical and consumer-oriented inventions, power alliances with social and political institutions, the broad-scale ritual propagandizing of scientific myths, and the broad-scale persistent propagandizing of irreducibly objectified beliefs in such ideas as rationality, material, materiality, objective certainty, progress, analytical reason as an exercise superior to all other human efforts, the necessary mortality of nature, mind and being, and both the authority and the ultimate sufficiency of science itself. Exoteric religion is the application of metaphysically based ideas or mind-based presumptions to apparent or presumed to be physical objects. 
exoteric religion achieves physically effective control over physical objects and human populations by means of usually conspicuous exercises of prescriptive social activism and prescriptive social morality. Exoteric religion achieves physically effective mind control over human individuals and collectives by means of invariably conspicuous social and political moral performances, power alliances with social and political institutions, the public proliferation of sacred enclosures such as temple architecture, and the broad-scale persistent propagandizing of sacred artifices such as religious myths, irreducibly objectified beliefs, symbolic ceremonials, ritual reenactments, religious art, and the authoritarian assertion of such ideas as objective certainty, moral absolutes, the inherent integrity and reliability of tradition, happiness by means of institutions, blessedness by means of sacramentally authorized hierarchies of religious officials, faith as an exercise superior to all other human efforts, the necessary immortality of the ego and both the authority and the ultimate sufficiency of religion itself. The always first, the most basic effort of exoteric science is to objectify and thus and thereby to surround and control the con- sorry to surround and contain the controller by defining it reductively or in the conventional sense realistically and thus as physical phenomenon only or of the nature of physical reality only. The always first and most basic effort of exoteric religion and of esoteric mysticism, magic and metaphysical philosophy is to objectify and thus and thereby to surround and contain the controller by defining it idealistically and thus as being presently or at least ultimately a mental phenomenon only or of the nature of mind only. All exoteric or physically based knowing first objectifies a controller as not self by defining it as physical phenomenon only and then defines it further and reductively as physically external to self or to the exercised point of view. All exoteric religion and all esoteric metaphysical knowing, whether of a mystical or magical or philosophical or even somehow scientific nature, first objectifies the controller as not self by defining it as a mental phenomenon or idea different from self and then surrounds and contains it by internalizing the controller as an idea within the self-mind. All knowledge exercised or presumed by a point of view within a totality is bound and limited by and to point of view itself. In every context wherein different modes of point of view and thus of presumed knowledge are separately but coincidentally exercised or presumed, such as scientific versus religious or exoteric versus esoteric or physical versus mental and thus different or mutually differentiated traditions and methods of knowledge always oppose one another and always compete with one another and always and ceaselessly stage debunking rituals in order to cause doubt relative to the authenticity, honesty, integrity, verifiability, rationality, supportability and ultimate verity of the opponent's claims. In reality itself, which is truth itself, all modes and states of conditioning arising apparent knowledge 
or of ego-based or point-of-view-based knowing are merely imperfect knowledge and, as such, they are not true and they are not true to reality itself and thus, and they are thus and therefore limited, insufficient, point-of-view bound, merely ego-made and ego-binding and relative to reality itself and thus to truth itself, they are intrinsically false. They are heart lies that delude and defeat the heart itself. They are mere and all untruth, not relevant to reality realization. And altogether they are, each and altogether, the root context of obstruction to the perfect knowledge that is the one necessity for the perfect freedom and perfect happiness of beings. Only perfect knowledge or intrinsic self-apprehension of the self-nature, self-condition and self-state of reality itself is truth itself. Perfect and thus inherently egoless or point of view less or centerless knowledge is neither controlled nor controlling nor seeking to control nor in any sense either related to or subordinate to a controller. Perfect knowledge neither knows nor solves nor seeks to solve a problem. Perfect knowledge does not surround or contain and neither is it surrounded or contained. Perfect knowledge is neither of a physical nor of a metaphysical nature. Perfect knowledge is neither exoteric nor esoteric, neither commonplace nor conventional, nor scientific nor religious, neither external nor internal, and neither conditionally knowing nor conditionally not knowing. Perfect knowledge self abides as is, always already prior to point of view, utterly beyond the context of control and intrinsically free of all physical and or mental or perceptual and conceptual presumptions. Every theory, every temple, every body, every object and every mere idea is a centralising enclosure either at outside or in inside. Every within, every presumption, every point of view, every location, every definition, every difference is an enclosure, a centre, a hitching post and an altar of sacrifice wherein and whereupon the declared not-self becomes scapegoat upon a middle plane. Every object is a scapegoat sacrifice, both inherently and in its exercise. The controller is at last a totality of all and all unknowns. The unknown totality is, first and always, whether by science or by religion, or by the conventions of commonplace, made as if into a god by ego's eye and thereafter it is confined to the middle and in due course it is brought low and made small and at last it is utterly destroyed or as it is by euphemisms substitute said in retrospect it were sacrifice every sacrificed object is a known god every known god is no longer divine, divine and real. The cultural sacrifice, whether by religious ritual or moral imperative or social and political decree, or by force of ego's illusory archetypes in brain, mind or commonplace expectation, is no longer relevant, right, true, necessary or sane. Perfect knowledge, perfect happiness and therefore perfect knowledge is required by all and all. Only perfect knowledge is in perfect freedom self-allowed and self-allowing all and all to self-abide as is. Only perfect knowledge is truth. Only perfect knowledge is divine. Only perfect knowledge is reality itself. Only perfect knowledge is perfect freedom. Only perfect knowledge is perfect happiness or intrinsic love bliss being itself. Only happiness itself thus is egoless, non-mortal, eternal, perfect and divine. Except for perfect knowledge, all knowledge is mere ideas, the fantasies of point of view, entirely imperfect, intrinsically limited, partial and insufficient, altogether not truth, not divine, not reality, not freedom, not happiness, and a merely mortal, unnecessary, 
and egoically self-deluded occupation of human memory. All imperfect knowledge is bunk. Da. I noticed as I was reading that I was contracting over it because I was thinking I don't understand this or I want to know this or I must under, I must do, read this slower or I, I must take it to bits and really get to know what you're talking about Adida and then you bring in perfect knowledge which is no contraction and I noticed how I was therefore contracting over these words as I read self-contraction is the fault is the obstacle of perfect knowledge self-contraction is not necessary no self-contraction and then what is inherent is always obvious always present case contemplation of your bodily human form is perfect knowledge perfect happiness perfect joy perfect intimacy perfect delight perfect knowledge is simply you which we all are First and foremost, one must notice the self-contraction that is not necessary. You realized your bright condition before you wrote all these books. Your body, mind, your body is the teaching. It's inherent meaning that it is always already presently the case. 